<laughs> now then, sugar. Ah, there's some in. I take. Oh! <laughs> I take Why are you standing with your finger in that coffee? Uh, it's too hot to drink at the moment. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, where have I put it? Have you looked over there? Where? There. Good idea. I'll have a look. Not working. Find somewhere else. There you are. Hey, this is a strange room. I've not been in here before. No, this is my laboratory. Is it? Yes. It's very nice. It is very nice. What's this? Oh, that little machine's used for measuring intelligence. Is it? It's called um, an intelligence measurer. Is it? Yes. How does it work? Look, I'll show you. Watch. There. Paul Chuckle, high IQ. High IQ too. Thank you very much. But you don't understand, do you? No. Didn't think you did. Hey, I know what this is. What is it then? It's a thingy. It's not a thingy. It's a, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Yeah, an O-meter. An O-meter? Yeah, that's right. Oh. See? One O. It's very clever. It is very clever. Yeah. No, no, no. Be careful with that. That's radioactive. Could be very dangerous. Oh. Radio One. Hey, I see what you mean. Yes. Yeah. If only I could remember where I put it. What are you looking for, Paul? My latest invention. No. It's only the greatest invention of all time. It can't be the greatest invention of all time. Why not? That was the thermos flask. The thermos flask? Yes. How do you make that out? Well, if you put anything into it hot, it stays hot. That's right. And if you put anything into it cold, it stays cold. Correct. Mm. Well, what's clever about that? How does it know? Hey, you're right. Mm. But my invention's going to solve one of the world's greatest problems. What's that? Homeless dogs. Homeless dogs? Yeah. What have you invented, then? The dog kennel. The dog kennel! <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't that been invented already? Oh, yeah, but not like mine. Oh. If only I could remember where I'd put it. Mm. Let's have a look. Oh! Oh, oh! Oh, 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 oh! Mm -hmm. Gotta be here somewhere. There it is. I could have sworn I looked there before. Is that it? Yeah, this little cube's my latest invention. The instant dog kennel. You'll never get a dog in there. No, it's dehydrated. What does that mean? Dehydrated. Hmm. It's when you take all the water out. Oh, what's the poor dog going to drink? Good point. We'll get some milk. Right. I still don't understand how you're going to get a dog in there. Oh, well, it's simple. What you do, you put the cube into a bucket of water and whoosh. What do you whoosh for? Instant kennel. It's all to do with relative density. Oh, I know all about that. What do you know about relative density? I've got lots of relatives and they're all dense. I bet you know who's the densest. Young Mr Brown. Hey? My dentist, the youth with a tooth. Don't change the subject. Just whatever you do, don't get this cube wet. It's imperative. Pair of teeth, I'll tell Mr Brown. Yeah, you're at it again. Just don't get that cube wet. OK, I won't get it wet. Right. Just one thing, what would happen if I did get it wet? If you got that cube wet, it'd grow and grow and grow until it was enormous. That kennel's for a great dame. Great, Scott. And them as well. <laughs> oh. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, certainly. Who was that? The Science Fair, Earl's Court in London. Is he? Mm. What's he caught on? No, Earl's Court's a place. That was the organiser of the Science Fair. He only wants me to exhibit my instant kennel. How are we going to get it there? Good point. Do you know any couriers? Uh, Uncle Bert. Uncle Bert? Is he a courier? He's a cook in an Indian restaurant. Makes lovely curries. Not that kind of courier. A courier. Look, we'll have to take it ourselves. Uh, what about the show? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Mm. Tell you what, you'll have to think of something. I'll think of something. Good. Uh, that's it. There's no show. No, no, you can't do that. You can't just say there's no show without a word of explanation. Oh. Think again. I'll think again. Uh, I know. There's no show because we've got to deliver Paul's kennel. How's that? 
Perfect. Now, can you lay on the hire car? I don't want to do that. Why not? I might fall off when he drives away. You're right. Uh, we could go by train. I've got a better idea. What's that? We'll go by train. Good idea. Call me a cab. You're a cab. Thank you very much. You carry that. The station's all next door. I'll get changed to something more comfortable. Come on. Right, here we go. Hey, you didn't get that wet, did you? No, I didn't get it wet. Good, because you mustn't get it wet. Right. Now, go and get me a trolley. OK. Mm -hmm. Come on. Thank you. Close the doors. Oh, OK. <sighs> place. <laughs> oh, Paul, they won't close. I think mean they won't close. Well, I tried, but I couldn't get them closed. I... Come on. I got the tickets. Oh. Here you are. Tie that on yourself. What is it? It's a baggage label. I couldn't afford two tickets, so you'll have to pretend your baggage. Charming. Are we travelling first class? One of us is. Guess who? Well, you're going to be travelling with my invention. Am I? Yeah. You'll be travelling the guards van. Oh, I wanted to go on the train. You will be on the train. The guards van's part of the train. Oh, great. Anyway, we've got a little bit of time to wait, so we can have a look around. You never know. We might get an idea for another programme. On railways? Yeah. Be easy enough to remember the lines, then. Well, I like that. Remember the lines? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? are you sure you didn't get this wet? No, I didn't get it wet. Oh, good. Come on. Oh. Lizzie and Daniel had a big-headed cousin named Brian who lived in the city. When Lizzie and Daniel found out that Brian was going to come and stay with them in the country, Lizzie said... Yuck! He's always going on about how fantastic the town is. And they heard the mum say to the dad, when they shouldn't have been listening, that she thought it was about time that Brian was taken down a peg. You know, for once, our mum is right. It's about time somebody took Brian down a peg or two and I'd like to be the one that does it. Me too. So Lizzie took a large sheet of paper and wrote, plan for taking Brian down a peg or two. Have you got a plan? No. And so they went out of the barn and tried very hard to think of a plan. What we'll do is take him into the top field where the cows are. Why? All townies think cows are bulls and are going to attack them. He'd be scared stiff. That's your good idea. Brian arrived, and as soon as lunch was over, he started. Of course, my favorite food at the moment is tandoori. Though I don't expect to get much chance to eat continental cuisine out here in the country. Yes, we do. We get the chip van every Thursday. Come on, Brian, I'll show you around the farm. They took Brian through the field, along the track and around a couple of cornfields until they came to the top field. The dad's herd of 30 cows was grazing peacefully. This'll bring him down a peg or two, thought Daniel, and Lizzie thought the same. Brian walked in the field and straight up to the cows. Lizzie and Daniel watched him open-mouthed. Very fine-looking cows you've got there. Pedigree Frisians, aren't they? I've read about them in my encyclopedia at home. Though I expect you don't get much time to read books out here in the country. Lizzie looked at Daniel in desperation. She might have known it. Brian was the only townie in the whole wide world who could tell a cow from a bull. Lizzie and Daniel next tried to take Brian down a peg or two by showing him their tree camp in the woods. But Brian told him that the adventure playground over the road had just been painted and had a roof on. And of course, he was right. And when Lizzie and Daniel showed him their dad's brand new tractor, Brian said that the digger in the builder's yard behind where he lived had far more gadgets on it. And again, he was right. And so the days went by. And on the evening before Brian was due to return home, Lizzie and Daniel's mum asked him to run down to the post office with some letters. So off they set. Lizzie sighed, Daniel sighed. Brian was just as big-headed as ever. We've four posts in town. 0700 hours, 1200 hours, 1600 hours, and 1930 hours. Oh, golly, golly, gosh! 
By the time they got to the post office, it was almost dark. And as they made the way back home, Lizzie and Daniel noticed something strange. Brian had stopped talking. Suddenly, he stood quite still, looking up at the sky. Look at that. What? Stars. I would suppose the stars are bigger and brighter in town. I can't see the stars where I live. I know they're there, but I just can't see them. I think it must be the street lights. All I can see is a sort of orange glow. As they walked home, Daniel and Lizzie smiled at each other. So that was one thing they had that was better than the town. Brian didn't say anything. Perhaps at last he'd been taken down a peg. Here it is, the parcel's office. Now, don't forget, you pretend to be baggage. Oh, like this? Hey, that's good, that. Is it? Yeah, go back into it. Oh. Right, here we go. Keep still. Oh. Open, says to me. That's it. Well, how was I to know you wouldn't fit on the scales? We'll have to get you a proper ticket now. Come on. We're going now. Yes. Right. Hey, just a minute. What? Get up. That's my place. I knew there was something wrong. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <laughs> hey, this takes me back. What does? Well, my uncle, he used to work on the railways in the days of steam. Did he? Yeah. What did he do? He worked on the footplate. What's the footplate? Oh, about 12 inches round. Oh. What's that in metres? Oh, it's easily, um... Have you any relatives worked on the railways? Oh, yes. My great-granddad Ebenezer. Ebenezer? Ebenezer the Sneezer. Oh, yeah. He helped Stevenson with his rocket. Did he? That's historical, that is. It's not historical, it's a fact. No, it's historical. Oh. Anyway, what did he do to help Stevenson with his rocket? He put it in a milk bottle for him on Guy Fawkes night. Oh, yeah. Then he retired. When did he retire? After he lit the blue touch paper. Very sensible. Yeah. Come on. <coughs> Hey, the pigeons are noisy today. Oh, no. What? I've got a flat tyre. Oh. We'll have to carry the stuff. Right. Don't forget the briefcase. OK. Come on, we've still got some time left. Let's go in and have a cup of coffee. Right. Coffee. It's this way. Come on. Fancy I'm riding it upside down. That's better. Can read it now. It's very small. Yeah, this is one of those ladies' fast food restaurants. Is it? Yeah, what you do, you put your order into this microphone, yes. and then they send your food up. Do they? Yes. Can I do it? No, 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 it's too technical for you. Oh. I'll do it. What? Two teas, please, two sugars, stirred and not shaken. Hey, very nice here, isn't it? And two sticky buns. If it's not too much trouble, thank you. Oh, no. What? The announcer's booth. Do you know him, then? Who? Oh. Booth, the announcer. No, this is the station announcer's booth. If this ever gets out, I'll be a laughing stock. Stop. Oh. And two bowls of soup, please. Paul! Paul! Hey, did you know that the railway system in Britain was invented in the 19th century? By some railway station owners who wanted them all joined up. Yeah, the Great Western, for example. Yeah. That ran from... Half past eight till half past ten and starred John Wayne. John Wayne? Yeah, all Great Western starred John Wayne. Didn't you see True Grit? No. I did. I saw it twice. And, you know, he fell off his horse in exactly the same place both times. Well, there you are. Some people never learn, do they? No. Funny you should mention grit, though, because that was one of the problems faced by early rail travellers. Oh. Flying cinders. Peter Pan. Peter Pan? Peter Pan flies, cinders go to the ball. Oh, no, cinders out the chimneys. No, that was Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Of course it was, silly me. Silly you. Are you sure you didn't get that wet? No, I didn't get wet. Oh, it's funny, it seems a different colour, I remember. Come on. Do you realise that all early trains were powered by steam? Were they? Then these came into service, the diesel. Why did they call it a diesel? Well, when they were looking for a train to run on oil, yeah. they found one of these and said, Diesel do. <laughs> <laughs> diesel do? <laughs> nice, this. Hey, Paul. What? Must be a football special. Why is that? The linesman's left his flag and whistle. Oh. Offside. 
Rotherham United. <laughs> <laughs> Just down here. Are you sure? Yeah, that nice, isn't it. Do you think so? Hey, come on. It's getting a bit heavy, Paul. Hey? It's getting a bit heavy. Don't be silly. It won't get heavy while it's dehydrated and not wet. Oh. You'll be okay. Just come on. All right. Come on. Can't be far now. Oh. Oh. So when you pick a deli circus, I think. Barry? Oh. Barry? Where are you? What do you want? Oh, you're there. That's it. Come on, it's not far now. Straight up here. Up here. That's it. Keep on coming. That's the one. Oh. Hey, are you sure you didn't get that wet? Are you sure we're not lost? Lost? What do you mean? Me? Lost? I've got my A to Z here. Look, there it is. Could you get a bigger one? No, they only had the little ones. Oh. Now, look, what we did, we came down here, you see, we turned right. Yeah. And... He's gone in my kennel. Get him out. He's a bit big. You're bigger than he is. You're bigger than I am. Exactly. Get him out. Would you come out, please? <laughs> I've got a way with animals. Shrunk, hasn't he? Get that now, come on. Down this way somewhere. Come on. Can't be far. Come on. Come on. I'm a bit tired now, Paul. Tired? I think I'll have to have a rest. All right, we'll have two minutes. OK. Put it down there. Right. That's okay. it. You OK? Yeah. That's the one. Hey. Is that Big Ben I can hear? No, no, that's the sound of Bow Bells. Oh, You've yeah. heard of that, haven't you? Yes, I've heard it of it. It is good. Hey. The kennel! Hey! No, come back! Come on. OK, out this way now. Something around the corner, I think. Hey, this is the place. Told you we'd find it. Oh. You wait here while I go inside and check it out. OK. Hey, what's it like in there? It's a scientist fair. Oh. They've got rides and stalls and things. Yeah. And they guess the silly invention competition. And guess what? What? I've entered your instant dog kennel. It's not mine, it's yours. No, it's yours. I give it to you, remember? No. Yeah. Anyway, they've given us free tickets for the rides while they judge the competition. Great. Yeah, come on, we'll get this inside. I'll right. give you I can't wait. Got it? Yeah. Right, round here. I say, we're going to win this, you know. Can I go on the dodge Yeah. Here we go. Here we go, it's going, it's going. Hey, Whoa. hey it's big fast, it? Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Hey, I'm beating you now. Hey, I've got your... Hey, I'm coming. Hey, oh. this is great. <laughs> hey, I like this, don't you? Well, <laughs> hey, that's great. Hey, hey, that's us. That's us. Yes. Hey, we didn't do too badly, did we? Didn't we? No, we got the Nobel Prize. What's the Nobel Prize? A door knocker. Nobel.